You're bleeding heavy every month. You're tired of all that pain. And your doctor says, you know what? You need a hysterectomy. Or do you? So let's talk about why you should think twice about having a hysterectomy and some alternatives. Hello, my name is Dr. Isator and I'm a medical doctor. Welcome to my channel. What is a hysterectomy? A hysterectomy is basically the removal of the uterus, which can be accompanied either by the removal of one or both of your ovaries, oophorectomy, or the ovaries and the fallopian tubes. And that's called a salpingo oophorectomy. If both ovaries are removed along with the fallopian tubes, that's called bilateral salpingo oophorectomy. Hysterectomy is the second most commonly done surgery on women of reproductive age, second only to cesarean section. Most hysterectomies are elective. That means that they may be optional and they can be pre-planned. The majority of hysterectomies are done to treat non-cancerous conditions of which there are other effective alternatives. Reasons for hysterectomies include uterine fibroids, pelvic support problems such as uterine prolapse, abnormal uterine bleeding, chronic pelvic pain, and also gynecological cancers. One third of all hysterectomies are done to treat uterine fibroids, making it the most common reason for surgery. This is followed by abnormal uterine bleeding at 16% and gynecological cancers at a whopping less than 8% of all hysterectomies performed. In fact, fibroids and abnormal uterine bleeding account for five times as many hysterectomies performed as all the gynecological cancers combined. However, it may surprise you to know that both of these conditions have the most progress made in terms of development of alternative treatments. That is right, ladies. There are viable alternatives, and I'm going to outline to you why you should always, always look at the alternatives first before making the life-altering decision of removing your womb. What are the risks of hysterectomy? Side effects include pelvic floor dysfunction, fracture risk, dementia, depression, increased risk of heart disease, just to name a few. And ladies, black women have a higher rate of hysterectomies and an increased risk of complications when compared to our Caucasian counterparts. Also, the removal of the ovaries with or without the fallopian tubes alone or with hysterectomy is 73% of all hysterectomies. Why? Because medical practitioners have rationalized that the removal of the ovaries and the fallopian tubes will decrease the risk of ovarian cancer and also that when women reach menopause, their ovaries no longer produce any hormones, so they're useless, so hey, why not remove them? And does it even surprise you to know that both of these rationales have been found to be severely flawed? First of all, research has shown that hysterectomies and bilateral salpingo oophorectomies put women at a far greater risk of dying from more common diseases than ovarian cancer. Yes, ovarian cancer is difficult to diagnose, but it is still a relatively rare condition, especially when compared to women dying from more obviously common diseases such as coronary artery disease and even hip fracture. And even for those women who happen to have an average risk of getting ovarian cancer, the research has shown that it is more favorable for them to keep their ovaries until at least the age of 65. Secondly, the notion that the ovaries are useless after menopause has been shown to just simply not be true. Well, yes, 
the amount of estrogen produced by the ovaries after menopause definitely plummets. But ovaries continue to make androgens and a substantial amount of androgens, which is, you know, the male hormones. And these hormones circulate peripherally in the female body, especially in the fat, and they're converted to estrogens. And these estrogens that are produced peripherally outside of the ovaries due to the production of androgens from the ovaries play a major role in mental health and libido in women. Furthermore, even just the removal of the uterus alone while leaving the ovaries in place has been shown to have a significant effect on women's ovarian function and causes them to actually go into menopause earlier. It's also been shown that the more feminine organs that you remove, that is, let's say, first you remove the uterus or somebody just removes the uterus and one ovary or the uterus and both ovaries and the fallopian tubes, the more your risk goes up of having dementia. That does not sound too appealing. Therefore, ladies, with all of these documented risks, the removal of your uterus via hysterectomy is a decision that should not be taken lightly. Now let's talk alternatives. And when I'm talking about the alternatives, I'm going to talk specifically about alternatives for treating uterine fibroids as well as abnormal uterine bleeding. Firstly, when weighing the alternatives, there are a few things that must be taken into consideration. First, what are the specific symptoms? Is there heavy or prolonged periods? Are there symptoms secondary to bulk or the enlargement of the fibroids, or even both. What is the size, number, and location of the fibroids? What are the plans for future pregnancies, and how old is the woman? How close is she to menopause? Because once menopause reaches, menstruation stops, and the fibroids will actually shrink. So let's deal with the alternatives for heavy menstrual bleeding first. So what is considered heavy menstrual bleeding? This is bleeding for seven or more days, or you may have a normal length of cycle, but the bleeding is so heavy that you have to use double sanitary pads, or there's frequent changing of pads and tampons, or you might even need an adult diaper and you also experience frequent staining of your clothes and your bedding. Also, most women with heavy menstrual bleeding tend to develop iron deficiency anemia because of the chronic blood loss. The first alternative, contraceptive steroids. That's your birth control pills, patches, and vaginal rings. Also, you have your long-acting progestational agents, such as Zepoprovera or even Implanon. There's also the hormonal intrauterine devices, such as Mirena. Now, all these things, they are easy to use and they are reversible for women who still want to get pregnant in the future. Next, fibrinolytic agents. That is tranosamic acid, or also known as Listodon. This is an oral agent that you only need to take while you are actively bleeding and it greatly slows down menstruation. It is also safe to be taken by women who want to be pregnant in the future. Now on the package, the prescribing information for this drug says that you have a higher risk of developing blood clots. However, Clinical studies have not been able to prove this risk. Next, we have minimally invasive surgeries. In hysteroscopic or vaginal myomectomy, 
the myomectomy is actually performed through the vagina. There are no incisions, no cuts to the belly, and it's done to remove fibroids that are within the uterine cavity or may have invaded up to 50% into the muscle of the uterus. The recovery is quick, the complications are rare, and this makes it a great alternative for women who want to become pregnant. It is often used when miscarriages or infertility is the main or only symptom of the fibroid. Next is a procedure called endometrial ablation. Now this is where a tool is used to go into the uterus and destroy the endometrium or the lining of the uterus. It's usually done if there are intramural fibroids, that's fibroids located within the muscle wall of the uterus, or if the general structure of the uterus is normal. This is not a procedure for women who intend to get pregnant in the future, and also not for women who have a higher than normal risk of developing ovarian cancer. This is because there isn't 100% guaranteed that the entire endometrium will be destroyed. Now let's move on to alternatives for bulk symptoms with or without heavy menses. Oftentimes, fibroids may be the size of a tennis ball, or they may be the size of a grapefruit, or God forbid, they can grow to the size of a basketball even. Now you could imagine the problems that could arise from these huge masses in our bodies, and those are called bulk symptoms. Sometimes they could press on the bladder causing urinary symptoms or they can be pressing on the bowels causing constipation or they may even press on the spine and cause back pain. Therefore, treatment for bulky fibroids need to focus on procedures that either shrink, soften, or just remove the fibroids altogether in order to get relief. One alternative to hysterectomy is gonadotropin releasing hormone agonists. Now, these bring about a condition called amenorrhea. That is the complete cessation of menstruation altogether. And this leads to the shrinking of the fibroids. Now, this is good for women who have fibroids that are causing both bulk symptoms and abnormal uterine bleeding. Now, these hormones do cause symptoms related to a severe decrease in estrogen, such as bone loss. And when the treatment is stopped, the fibroids will more than likely return back to their original size. So that's why this treatment is mainly good or mainly used for women who are preparing for surgery, like a myomectomy. And also, it can be used in women who are at that stage in their life where they are getting very close to menopause, so that's perimenopause, or women who are also undergoing other treatments like chemotherapy to treat a gynecological cancer. The main thing is that those treatments are meant to be short term. The next procedure is laparoscopic or robotic myomectomy. Now this is the removal of the fibroids through several small incisions or cuts made in the abdomen. It is less invasive than open surgery and therefore has a faster recovery time. It is mainly used for fibroids that are located on the outer surface of the uterus. The next procedure is uterine artery embolization or uterine fibroid embolization. This involves a small incision being made at the groin and a catheter being introduced that is fluoroscopically guided to find the 
uterine artery and then a chemical is injected to block the blood supply to the uterus. Now this leads to the degeneration of the fibroids while sparing the muscle layer of the uterus. This is because fibroids typically have a greater blood supply than the myometrium of the uterus. The downside is that this procedure has been shown to have similar outcomes and complications as hysterectomies. The upside is that there is less bleeding involved and a quicker recovery time. Now, it has even been shown to have a deleterious effect on ovarian reserve. That is the amount of estrogen that you have or that the ovaries can produce. This means that women who have this procedure done have been found to actually go into menopause at a earlier age. Studies have shown that it has very similar effects on the ovaries, just like hysterectomy. So it's something that I would advise you ladies to really think about before you jump into that procedure. And our final procedure is one called magnetic resonance guided focus ultrasound surgery. I dare you to say that 10 times fast. This procedure is the new kid on the block in terms of alternatives to hysterectomy. It involves lying in an MRI machine so that the doctor can get a real-time view of the fibroids and the use of high-intensity ultrasound waves directed through the abdominal wall directly at the fibroids, destroying them via a process called coagulative necrosis. Now, coagulative necrosis is simply a process by which the cells are starved of oxygen and therefore they die. Now, the good thing about this procedure is that each and every fibroid can be treated individually without ever causing any damage to the walls of the uterus. This makes this perfect for women who are trying to preserve their fertility. And also, it can be done under light sedation as an outpatient procedure. That is, you basically just visit your doctor one day, have the procedure done, and go home and you can return to your life within one to two days. It's wonderful. So I suggest that a lot of you ladies out there look into asking your gynecologist about this procedure. See if you are eligible for it and if it's even offered where you are. And another wonderful thing is that it does not have the transient effects similar to that of uterine artery embolization and hysterectomy. So women never have to go through a period where they lose their periods. So there you have it ladies, a few alternatives that you can take to your doctor if they are bringing up the idea of having a hysterectomy done. And I cannot end this video without also mentioning that apart from all these things, it always goes back to how we treat our bodies. For many things, there are natural alternatives. Some women, due to the progression of their fibroids or whatever condition they have, or they may have cancer, they have no alternatives but to have a hysterectomy. But for all the others, you can at least try natural alternatives. It is always very important to treat your body right. Have a good diet, a low carb to no carb diet, a good exercise program, especially weightlifting, and get out there and get some sun. Or if you cannot get out and get some sun, you can supplement with vitamin D. If you would like to know more about how to naturally treat 
your fibroids you can watch my video which i will link up here and i will also place a link in the description so i want to thank you for watching this video and i hope that it was informative to you i hope you enjoyed it i hope you got something that you can use if you did please be sure to like the video and also subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell so that you can get informed when I make more health videos. And until then, I hope to see you again next week. Bye.